This is a special interview airing live on Hot FM, Kutu FM, Capital FM, Lingotainment, including Hot TV on Facebook. I am your host, Gary Masami. Other radio stations across the country where we are broadcasting is Amuchinga Radio, Libati Radio in Korokoso, we also have uh, Serenjo Radio, Tuta FM in Mansa, uh, Mano FM in Kasama, iWeb in Chingola, uh, we also have a few free in Chipata, we have Choma, uh, Mano, Lotong, we also have Zambezi FM, Voice of Kalomo as well, and uh, Mafken Radio is also um, a, a part of this broadcast. Not forgetting Damon TV as well. Now, this is a special interview, and uh, we are here at the residence of uh, uh, UPAD President Hakai Lechileno. Uh, there has been a firestorm brewing in Zambia over the past few days regarding the role that Mr. Hichilema allegedly played during the privatization process in Zambia and the role that he played. The intense debate has followed the accusations by uh, FPD president, uh, leader, Ms. who at the time of privatization was finance minister. Uh, that Mr. Ichilema acted in propriety and amassed personal benefits from that process. Well, what has happened since is that Mr. Ichilema has instructed his lawyers to issue a demand notice of Ms. Nawapi to apologize, retract, and pay a conservative sum of $3 million in compensation. Now, as at midday yesterday, uh, Ms. Nawapi refused to apologize, and the 24 hour period in which to do so has elapsed immediately. It, it, it elapsed yesterday at 17 hours. That's Thursday, September 3rd, 2020. Now, we have designed this interview to offer an opportunity to Mr. Echilema to provide answers to the many questions surrounding this issue, knowing fully that the matter is not yet before court. I think we need to stress that, uh, very important. Now, um, with that background, um, allow me to welcome Mr. Hichilema to this interview, and at the same time, we thank him for welcoming us to his beautiful home, because we are at his residence. Mr. Hichilema, good morning, sir. Gary, good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, listeners, uh, viewers, wherever you may be. We're very pleased to host you today. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Great. So we're here today mainly because this time last week, you had phoned in on the live hot seat program to challenge what you termed as lies peddled by Ms. Nawakwi over your role in the privatization process. She alleged that you made your money through privatization. So the question would be, did you make your money through privatization? Well, um, uh, Gary, it's very important that um, we clarify at some point uh, who was responsible for the privatization program. I hope we will cover that. Uh, but to allege that uh, um, I made money, whatever the definition of money is in the privatization program, uh, because of the privatization program only, is far from the truth. Because even as you will see from this conversation, I started business at a very early age, 26 years old. And at the time the program came through, and even before the program came through, I was able to buy the property, a property, just as an example, a property in the name of several Road at 61 million kwacha in 1995, before I was involved in any transaction of any kind. So we already had resources, and we thank God for that, to be able to do that. Uh, uh, so it's not true that uh, we made our money through the private. We're business people, we started business earlier. So that was just a progression. Um, uh, you mentioned the house, and I know it's one of the issues that Ms. Nawaku did raise, and we'll touch on that yes. shortly. But, but I know that your role in the privatization process always pops up. And it is usually around this time as we get into the election year. You tell us now, um, you as Hakai Nechilema, did you participate in the privatization process? Were you in charge of this process? The answer is that I participated in the privatization program. I was not in charge of the privatization program. Who was in charge? It was the government of the day. Which was the government of the day? The MMD government. They were responsible for the privatization program. Police, in terms of policy, 
they were responsible. They set the privatization policy, not myself, because I was not part of the government. Legally, they were responsible because they set up the Privatization Act of 1992 as a government of the NMB under the late Chiluva, President Chiluva, may so rest in, in peace. So they were responsible. And the overall structure, I think today is a day for us to explain these things so that those who may be unaware can understand. Those who may be mischievous, their mischief can be laid bare today. The MMD government took office 1991, 1992, they enacted the Privatization Act, legal position, which means parliament of that time made a decision and gave the citizens of this country the law, Privatization Act. Then, the structure, the way they worked, was that there was, obviously after the law was made, there was the cabinet on top, chaired by the president of the time. Mr. Chilo. Under the cabinet there, there was a committee of ministers within cabinet that were called committee of ministers on privatization. HS was not there. Then there was a privatization agency, ZPA. Okay. As an institution, as a manager to implement the privatization program, it was there. That is where the policy and legal power basically lay. I hope we get that very clear. So, the, the decider was the cabinet, chaired by the president, and then the subcommittee of you know, cabinet inside there, and the Ministry of Finance, Commerce, as it were, Mines or Tourism, depending on the assets, were key. Then the manager was the privatization agency. The privatization agents then would ask for expert advice from many, many people. Thousands of Zambians, not just Zambian lawyers, Zambian corporate finance guys like ourselves, not just ourselves, real estate agents, they, they, they asked, you know, valuers, I'm talking of property valuers, engineering firms, all of them from 1991, 1992 along were somehow involved many of them, and 270 companies were sold or units, as it were. And today, HH was responsible. HH sat below the privatization agency, asked to do his professional work, like an asset verification. So, so, so the answer is yes, yeah. in terms of involvement at that level, as I've explained, no in terms of responsibility, in terms of power, in terms of legal power, in terms of police power, mm -hmm. I was not responsible. So you were not charged? I was not in charge. Thank you very much. Okay, now let's let's zero in on the three key issues that yeah. uh, Madam Nawaki raised because um, and, and I know this is what has brought up all this talk over the past yes, years. Yes. Uh, in it, the civil road property, the Ramco sale, and then there's the Mosio Tunia yes. uh, International Hotel mm -hmm. that's uh, in, in Livingston. Mm -hmm. Let's go through each one of these exactly. items. Thanks. Let's start with the Sable Road yes. property. Yes. Um, when did you acquire that property? Well, first I think that it's fair to say that uh, Madam Nawapi on Hot FM alleged that I stole a house from Lima Bank. And she mentioned the house a couple longer ago. A several road house in Crescent that I stole the house from Lima Bank. I abused my law in the privatization program, got that house from Lima Bank dubiously. Shaki called me a crook. I'm not a crook. So that's the first issue. So that that house never belonged to Lima Bank. As she alleged, so you did not buy the house from Lima, from Lima Bank. I bought the house, but not from Lima Bank. You can lead me on, on this one, or I can illustrate. Is, is, a, is a proof, is a, is a document to show that uh, you did not acquire this property from Lima Bank? There is, yes. Okay, would you care to show us? Absolutely. Gary, you, you're coming on very well. I think that will help the viewers. Madam Nawaki made this allegation clear, unambiguous. I responded. On your program that I never bought the house from Lima Bank, I never stole the house, I don't steal. Here are the facts about 
a property. A property. This property is called Farm 488A, stroke 14, stroke A, stroke 3, several lots. That's the name of the property. That's the identity, legal identity of the property. Property have legal identities, right? So, I bought this house from a company called TBZ, National Tobacco Company. So, this house basically was advertised, open tender, public open tender through the newspaper. In 1995, in 1995, Madam Nawabu says, I stole the house from Lima Bank because in her allegation, I was involved in privatization of Lima Bank, which year, 1998, that I bought this house through a public tender in 1995. The timeline there does not match. Someone is lying. Is it me or is her? It is her who is lying. I said, Edith Nawab, you lied. I never bought the house from Lima Bank in 1990 or thereafter, but 1995. So let me just run you very quickly the time the through the document. So there is a summary of the evidence of the house having been bought <laughs> from TBZ National Tobacco Company and not from Lima Bank. Very, very quickly. So I responded to a newspaper ad advert in April 1995, right? Very important. And then after I responded, in fact, the, the newspaper was in May, advert, I responded within May 1995. And I was awarded a tender. I was the highest bidder, Gary, at 61 million cost. That's the point I made earlier on. Not involved in the privatization, I already, as a business person, was able to tender for this house at 61 million cost. Answers your earlier question. Did I make money from privatization? I was already able to buy. God was kind enough to us through our business from the time we were 26, I was able to buy this house. So now, who advertised the house? A firm in dollar called TP Chiwe. It's all here. I think I gave you copies of the document. T.P. Chiwe, you do have a copy? Yes. <laughs> Very good. T.P. Chiwe and Company of Ndola, uh, you know, who were valuation surveyors and state agents who had been engaged to sell the property. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, I myself just made an offer. The advert had many other houses. I singled this one and made an offer. To, to be specific, my offer went in on 26th of April, 1995. The records are here. Then evaluation was done. How they did it, I don't know. That was not my job. I was offered the house. So who owned the house from day one? Who owned the house? Let's go through very briefly. The records are there. Here is a record from Lance, Minister of Lands. That's a record that shows who owned the property, if it's on title in this country. Thanks. And you can see the stamp, um, uh, Gary. This statement was obtained in, on 8 December 2011 because questions around this house started a long time ago. That's what many people are not aware. So, Mr. Chileshe was the owner of the house and he sold it to the Tobacco Board of Zambia in July 1997. July 1997. Then, Tobacco Board of Zambia went along their entries here, got a mortgage, Mortgage from Zambia National Building Society for 15,000 kwacha on 6 October 1971. Right? The mortgage was entered in the property. Then, in December 1989, the Tobacco Board of Zambia changed its name to National Tobacco Company. You can follow what I'm saying here. And all these entries are there. They're not my entries, they're entries from <laughs> the Minister of Land, which is the government department. Then, National Tobacco Company borrowed money from Finance Bank in December, basically, 1990. They borrowed money from Finance Bank. From this document I've given you, Gary, which explained how the Finance Bank 
then was not paid, and they moved in to repossess the house according to the security that was offered. Mm -hmm. And when they repossessed the house, they passed it on to TP Chiwe of Ndola to advertise for sale. That's when I, I responded. After that, I won the bid, as I said, 61 million kwacha, no income from that privatization, mm -hmm. from my other business. As a partner, as a shareholder of a couple of businesses, at an early age. No privatization at that time. I was already a shareholder. Then, after I bought the house, I paid the real through the real estate agent, through my lawyer, one Malcolm Sonda, who is Deputy Chief Justice, and he's still alive, Malcolm Sonda. Then they went and paid off the mortgage, and clear the mortgage was cleared on the as the debt shows here. Very, very clear. Right? Mortgage plus interest was a 10 million quarter is at 27 September 1990. And the money I paid them, they went and cleared the mortgage. Then they were able now, on 7 July 1995, they discharged the mortgage. That's, it. That's, that's, that's a month. Then the house was offered to me by the National Tobacco Company through the real estate agent. And I bought it and registered an assignment, a document called an assignment, which is used to change ownership <laughs> on 7 July 1995, mm -hmm. Gary, and then I became the owner of the house. 14, 14 stroke 3A, in short, we call it Sable Road, Kablonga, was never, never ever a Lima Bank house. Lima Bank came up for privatization in 1998. I bought the house in 1995. Leave it in the market, you are a liar. Thank you. That clears um, one of uh the particulars of the yeah. the preparatory statements that uh, you yeah. have raised. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's But Gary, she yes. has a chance in court to uh -huh. prove whether she has a different record from this. Okay. She has a chance in court. That's why we've gone to court so we can stop shouting at each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Now I want us to move to yes. the, the the second uh, item, which yes. is uh Rankos. Yes. Um, what role did um, you can allow me to call you HH. Yes. What role did HH with pleasure, with pleasure. play in, the, in that transaction? Whether remotely or closely, because she raised this amongst them. First, yeah. first, there is this allegation that this young guy called HH was responsible for privatizing mines. And that he and he alone had the power. I think I've explained that I didn't have the power as a service provider. Contracted and many times appointed through public tender, either as an individual or as a firm, and of course, agreed fees. I got paid. That's my job. That's my business. I got paid. So I think today I must put it clear that uh, that is a different issue. So there is an allegation that I, I privatized a mine called Ramcos. I never privatized any mine in this country. I've made this position very clear. So, Ramco's was privatized around 1997. Gary, I was not involved. The records are there at the ZPA, at the Zambia Development Agency today. A very clear record. You will not find HH's name there. But were you a part of privatization yeah, at that point? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I've articulated that yes. in terms of uh, whatever work I was asked to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I think I explained that how the structure was and how we, the experts, came in. So, but I was not involved in the privatization of any mine, because this is a mine we're talking about. So it was sold by the government again, the MMD government, through the structure I gave you, in a committee of cabinet, cabinet on top there, ZPA. In this case, there was a special team that handled that. I was not involved. But why, why do you think she mentions HH? Malice. In all of this. Malice. In particular with Rancos, because you cleared almost in the first issue of the house. Yes. Now this, why do you think she mentions HH? She is confusing things. She is claiming that uh, I was the receiver, as you can see now, a demand letter, which I want to wave here, right? Item 5.3 of our demand letter, we are saying, Nawakwi, Madam Nawakwi, alleged that uh, I had an improper and illegal conduct in the receivership of Ramcos, privatization and receivership of Ramcos, in her insinuation that this young guy called HH had the power to privatize mines, all assets. It is wrong. It is actually malicious, completely malicious. 
And again, she will have the time to prove herself in court. That's the only place you go to if you're arguing. Let me return to the issue. The issue is that uh, neither did I privatize Ramcos, Gary, or, or was I a receiver of Ramcos. I was not. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that uh, in her program at Hold FM, she alleged that I stole $10 million from Ramcos. How I stole it, I don't know. She will prove that in court. We are going to see in her allegation how I stole $10 million from Ramcos. I didn't steal any money. I'm not a thief, Gary. I have never stolen anything. I want her to prove that. So I alleged to her that she alleged that I did all these things with Ramcos. I didn't. The only issue she may have been referring to was that uh, Ramcos was privatized in 1997. 2000 or thereabouts, after they had borrowed money, as a private company, went, basically borrowed money from Zanaco. After privatization, they borrowed money from Zanaco, a bank, a state bank, and they failed to pay it. And Zanaco appointed the receiver to recover the money that they, owed, they were owed by Ramcos. Ramcos then was a private company. Completely she misleading, misleading the, herself and the public. And I'm shocked that a minister of finance, former minister of finance, can fail to understand basic facts. It boggles one's mind. You can only prove one thing that malice, political malice, get HH at all costs, even if it's not a criminal. You think she's just being malicious? Completely malicious because the facts are there. How do I know the facts are there? When you are appointed receiver under the insolvency law in this country, you have to register your receivership deed at PACRA. At that time, it was called Companies Registry. It is now called PACRA. You also go to court and register that receivership deed. And by the way, you are appointed as a receiver as an individual. The law is very clear. There is nothing of HH there. So I can invite Zambians who may be doubting what's been going on to say, go to companies registry then, go to PACRA, go to courts and see the receivership deed who was appointed receiver. To recover, only to recover the money for Zanaco, not to privatize Ramcos, because it was already privatized three, four, five years earlier. So facts are there. I don't want to mislead anyone, Gary. You, as Hot FM, as an individual, like I talked about this land issue, you can go to lands to get this cleared up. If it's manipulated, the records are manipulated, there's a parent part there. As is the case on Ramcos, you can go and get these records. You don't need Hagaini to get them for you. Just go to the to Pakra, go to this way to, 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 to court, you'll see if there was a filing of a of a recovery. I think. My colleagues who did the receivership did a good job in the sense that they recovered the money for the NAPO, which was very difficult to, to recover. The rest is detail for court. We'll see what she says in court. Now, if you're joining us now, this is a special interview. We are at the uh, residence of uh, yeah. UPND President Hakaide Chilema. And uh, we're basically talking about uh, issues that have happened in the last uh, few days. And uh, we're just going step by step, breaking down some particulars of what... Uh, terms as uh, defamatory statements Absolutely. and uh, he's trying to clear that so uh, we're moving step by step we passed on the sale of uh, Roadhouse and uh, the sale of Ramcos Absolutely. now uh, the third of the issues that were raised by uh, um, Madame Nawaku yes, yes, is yes. the Mosotunia Intercontinental Mm. Yeah, the issue of your shares, <laughs> that uh, you sold your shares, <laughs> the valuation and all that. I mean, just paint us a picture um, of what kind of facility this place is and also what Madame Nawaki uh, concerns that she raised or your role that you play. Gary, in the characterization process, if there's an asset that delivered more than expectations, it was that project in the UK. If there's one, if there are three, four, it's one of them. World-class asset, competitive product internationally, delivered meticulously in accordance to the objectives that were set in the prioritization program. 
a policy of privatization, set agendas, set objectives, what needed to achieve. The law was there to allow it to happen. That asset was done, done to the best. If I was not Haga in the HLM, and I was not seeking public office, if I was not born in a particular area, I would be praised every day about the way that transaction was handled. That's the first thing I wanted to say. Right? Yeah. Completely first class. In accordance to the set objectives of the prioritization program, the broader program, there's an allegation that our shareholders, when the bids came through, they never came to me. When was they it? went to the ZBA. Is it true that the bid was in 1997? Hang on. Uh -huh. Hang on. The bids under the program were received by ZPA. I've already articulated what ZPA was, the manager of the program. Right? Mm -hmm. And the ZPA receives the bids and then decides who they think can help them to structure a transaction in accordance to the set objectives. That time ZPA will call people like ourselves. Not just me, there were other people called. I was not alone there. Now you can see the way things are happening, like is this is this troublesome chap called HH? Is this chap seeking presidency? He's not allowed to be a president of this country. He must just sit. He must just be a citizen of Zambia. He must not talk. He must say nothing. I aspire to be president again. So the bids went to ZPA, and the insinuation is that I then was a shareholder of Sunny International, and when I was appointed to assist put this transaction together, I had a vested interest in Sun International, therefore awarded the asset to Sun International. The material question, did I have a shareholding in Sun to be able to declare conflict of interest when I was asked to assist by the MMB government mm -hmm. through the cabinet and the ZPA? The answer is no. I was never a shareholder. Again, it is easy. I decided on this one, Gary, that I will not feed up with paperwork. I invite any citizen to go to the company's registry then, to go to PACRA now, and see if HH was a shareholder. Because that's what Nawaku, it is Nawaku, Madam Nawaku, alleged that I was a shareholder and therefore gave myself Sun International. She is wrong. Did, I was not a shareholder. Did you at any point buy any of the assets that you undertook to evaluate you. You are moving away from Sun now? No, 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 I, I, because I'm, I'm trying to... All right. Uh, I hear you. Yeah. I just want to answer the question properly. Yes. <laughs> I never. Okay. There is no asset that, in the context of the privatization program that I bought from ZPA or from the, minis, the, the government of the MMD, never. The records are there. There was no asset that I bought from ZPA. The assets I had, like this house in several, I bought from owners who were not government, who were not ZPA, who were not Minister of Finance. Unlike some of the people alleging these things, who actually bought assets from the privatization, you know, directly from government, I never bought any. I bought from private you know, ent you know, entities. Mm -hmm. And so, I never bought an asset from Musotia. That time, along the way, up to now, zero. Manos will say, no, 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 zero. It's not there. So if it is there, I challenge anybody out there to go out and bring the records. Not there. I mean, th th there's, there's an issue that has uh, arisen uh, from uh, the statement that you made yeah. during an interview with um, an industry colleague, Shoster, where you, you imply that uh, MMD ministers were sleeping for them to allow a young man to sell state assets. In what context was the, that <laughs> statement? Gary, I'm very grateful you have asked that question. Here's the context. context. My answer was a contextual answer. Because there's been a persistence over years, not just over the last one week or so. Let me just put it clear. 
from 2007, there's been persistence that uh, this boy, this young guy called HS, was responsible for the privatization program. I've already answered no, and I've answered several times <laughs> that I wasn't, right? So this question comes on and on. You will see a number of tapes now. In 2014, 2015, I had an interview with movie television customers. Right? He asked me the same question. 2014, I explained that the program was an MMD program. I was not in charge of it. I was an expert. I gave an example of the work I was doing. But this thing keeps on coming. And my nature, God, is that I am not litigious. I don't like noises. And in this country, there's a perception that those who make noise are clever. Those who make noise are right. In both cases, it is not true that noise makers are the most intelligent. And we have made a mistake in our country to reward noise makers. We must reward substance, facts, diligence, hard work. That's what we are over the years from a young age. So, I have never wanted to reach this level. I just used to explain and explain that. But it seems this matter keeps on coming. And then, on this interview, the same question was asked. I said, but I was not the one with the power. The power of public assets are held by and large by the Minister of Finance on behalf of the government, on behalf of the citizens of France. So I said, if people keep on saying that, I saw the mines, I was responsible for privatization, I made all these decisions when they were made by cabinet, the, and the committee of cabinet, reporting to cabinet, and obviously the agents, privatization agents. How is it that uh, people persist to say that? Malice. So I said, look, where were you when I was selling these assets? HH. Because I had no power. Basically, you're saying HH was, was, was smart. <laughs> well, to, to have managed to you know, do it at that tender age. They're so interpreting. The power. They're inter exactly. You've got it now. You've got it. They're interpreting it that this young chap had the power to sell an asset he didn't own. So, how is it possible that I could then just overrule, just undo? Cabinet, committee of cabinet, ZPA, and do parliament. Because remember, all these things will end up in parliament. And there have been many parliamentary reports, by the way, and reviews. How is it that this HH, this mysterious HH, has mystical powers to be able <laughs> to sell these assets and those who are the legal right? And the legal and moral responsibility were watching. Hence the context. That where were you? Were you sleeping? Because you can't keep on accusing me, an innocent guy. But I saw all, all this. So it was contextual. And I insist that really there's no way this subject must continue going like this. Today we must settle it. But obviously, I have an issue with Madam Nawakwe, who will settle it in court. Now, now, some people feel that um, uh, you stirred up this whole issue yourself when you dropped the names uh, of Madam Nawakwe. You also mentioned Mr. Chikwanda. Why did you do that? I didn't steer any name. It was not the intention of picking out Madam Nawakwe. Edith is Venomous, the way she speaks, the arrogance she exhibits, not with me only, but literally everybody who stand, who she thinks is standing in her way. I don't know why she thinks I'm standing in her way. So there was no issue. It was an issue of mentioning cabinet. Was she not a member of cabinet during the material time? She was. Mr. Chikwanda. Material time, he was the chief of staff at State House. Remember, cabinet decided following these levels, and the president sits in cabinet as chairman. Mr. Chiluba may so rest in peace, and the advisors in State House, economic chief, they are all part of the process. They will become because they are in the presidency. That was the difference, not to single out an individual 
for malice and Madam Nawaku is malicious by and large. That's her character. But God made her. We accept her as, as such. But I have a different character. I'm a different character. I'm also a creation of God. We call exist. Right? So that is the issue at, in, in point now. I would have mentioned anyone else that it could have been this minister, mind you. As Hagain. As Hagain. I continue, I had and I continue to have great respect for a son of Zambia called Ronald Damson CMN Penza. Great respect for that man. We miss him. He was a wonderful minister of finance. After 1991, the economy had collapsed. Ronald did a lot. RDS, we call it, to restructure, to try and realign this country. But unfortunately, we lost him. I could have mentioned him. A great, I was in a great admirer of Ronald Pence. I could have mentioned for him. I, I could have mentioned him. The fact that I didn't mention him didn't mean that there was a particular reason I mentioned now. So, because she was a minister, a minister of finance for that matter. I could have mentioned other ministers. It was just an example. And if I had more time, I would have mentioned others. But the principle remains that I was referring to people who had the legal right, who had the executive responsibility, because they were the party in office. As, you, as it were, let me extend this point, Gary. Later on, after the initial MMD cabinet and the transactions sales that took place were up, later on, under the late one was, there was a sale of Zanaka. I could have mentioned that. Nothing sinister. They had the power. What happened under President Rubia Banda, MMD again, they sold Zamta to Lap Green. But one minister I'll be happy to mention here because she talked about me and because she was a cabinet minister, is Doris Lee. She was involved in the sale, the privatization of, if you like, Zamtel to Lap Green. Okay. Clear. And my colleague, Mr. Lung, was in the transaction arrangements. I have a report for you here in the sale of court stories. It is here. I will show the media here that he too was involved like me. But why talk about her kind all the time? Why not talk about other people who were involved? Many, including those who bought assets. Now, I could have also said under PF, sorry, Gary, I'm not being overzealous, just to reinforce the point. Under the PF government, PF have privatized assets. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. Which you can prove. Receivership under the 1992 Privatization Act. The definition of privatization <laughs> is a sale of an entity as shares, a sale of assets, privatization, commercialization, liquidation or receivership was part of the definition. The PF, under that definition, appointed a receiver in case here, Concola Copper Mines, called Miningolungu. That is what people are forgetting. The PF have been selling assets they are in the process of selling Zafiko, which they are almost arrested me for when I warned them about that. They have put Zafiko on public offering. That's part of the meaning of privatization. So why Hakainde every time Hakainde? Because it's malice, because it's politics. He shouldn't be president of something. It's, it's Thank all you. malicious. It's all malicious. It's now, all in here. Now, I've got the documents here. Now, obviously, I mean, um, some people feel that um, uh, we need a commission of inquiry <laughs> on these matters, while others, including former minister, finance minister, Dr. Tatele Karumba, who we had yesterday on, on Hot yeah, sure. feels that um, it will be a waste of time, uh, or rather, why involve investigators and police to take up oh, okay, this issue? Mm. In, in your thoughts, I mean, what, what do you think? What route are you comfortable with besides the court process? It's really, Gary, not her kind of discomfort. It's not her kind of discomfort. It should never be narrowed down to Hakainde's comfort. 
it should be to do what is right. If it's justified. If it helps bring facts to the table. Because facts is what we need. Not innuendos, not, not Madame Namwapi's venom, anger, insults. I've never insulted. But she alleges so many things that if I start talking about the things she alleged at that vote FM program, it will take four hours for me to respond to each item. You know, bullying me, alleging. It doesn't bother me. I understand what she's trying to do. She's roosting for PF. She's a surrogate of PF. I understand. But she belongs there. But she must have no issue with me as well. And honestly speaking, I have no issue. I don't mind. You know, she alleged that, uh, you know, I should have been present 10 years ago. She's been seeking the presence of Zambia since 1989. Why has she not been present? Do I care? I don't care. But here's the issue. Is it valuable? Yes. Should we exactly. on this issue? Exactly. Should we deal with it in court? Exactly. Or <laughs> Do we have the resources? What value is it going to add? Has it been done before? My answer, part of the answer to this question is, uh, is actually, under the President Manawasa, late Manawasa, there was a thorough investigation of the five digestion program. Very, very thorough. And it brought out issues. It brought out litigation. It brought out all sorts of things. The records are there. Do we want to do it again? If Zambians find value in doing it, let them go ahead and do it. But it should not take away certain things. I hope there's a question about what should we be paying attention to? But what if I said on this program, don't do it, someone says, oh, he's covering up something. I'm not covering anything, as I've demonstrated in today's press briefing. There's nothing hidden for me. Everything is transparent. So if there's a wish, let it be. But we must also look at uh, what do we want to achieve? Do we want to continue being malicious? But do we want to convince somebody else? Did, uh, did, did the Manawasa probe not help? After the Manawasa probe, Jonas Shakapuswa, as the Deputy Minister of Finance, was asked a question. Report to Parliament on the privatization. He reported. Clear, the reports are in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Parliamentary reports. I think under PF, maybe, I'm, I'm not very sure, but maybe under you know, Finance Minister Chikwanda, a similar probe, in a way, was done. Either Chikwanda or uh, Madam Manakatri, Margaret Manakatri. It was done all under maybe Felix Mutati. I'm not too sure. The report is there in Parliament. What else do we want to do? But if Zambians want to do it, yeah. please so, yourself. So should we do a commission of inquiry or proceed with the court process? What's the best? I'm relaxed on that. My mind is that uh, there are things that are pending mm -hmm. which are important to the welfare of the people of Zambia. But I should never stand in the way of anyone like Edith Nawaki who wants to probe. That's why I'm giving her the opportunity to settle her wild and malicious allegations in court. Me, I've taken a position as an individual after 15 years of being maligned and I was quiet. I've been very patient, guys. <laughs> very patient. I'm a patient guy. As a cattle man, a boy from the village, you have to learn to be patient. Don't be emotional about issues. Look at the facts. Don't don't draw hot air, right? Just look at the substance. So I have taken this decision, right? So, but the probe can be done. I have no issue. But if there's value to the nation, and we don't digress ourselves from important issues in the country, let those who want it proceed with it. But it must be done holistically. If a probe comes, let it be done holistically, and you'll find that this document are presented here will be so small because the people who may have bought assets directly from the privatization are many and they have to answer questions. I have no questions to answer. So, so now that um, you have uh, gotten no response from uh, Madam Nawak, mm -hmm. the 24-hour period has elapsed and no apology has come to you. And she has actually even said that she does not apologize to criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Say that you are a criminal. In other words, what next? First, I'm not a criminal. I have never had a criminal mind. What we do is on top of the table. 
from a very young age, from the village, going to school three years without shoes. Very clear, history is very clear. I'm not a criminal. That's the first point I want to say. And I'm not really unhappy about it because it's coming from an individual who have a venom and a foul mouth, literally. So I forgive her for that. But I'll stay with the substance through the court process. I forgive her for that. I stay with the substance. Earlier you asked me a question, is tribunal is important or what? Remember, I've answered your question that the court will prove the issues. And in a civilized manner. So we don't have to insult each other. I will not insult her. We don't have to threaten each other. We don't have to be surrogates of the ruling party. There's an opposition. You're supposed to be representing the masses that are not having service from the government. What service are we talking about? We need jobs. The youth roam the streets without jobs. Graduates who are from nursing college, teacher college, 50,000, 100,000 of them are roaming the streets without jobs. Our job for me as HH, UPND, is to focus on how can we create jobs for the people. How can we send our children to school who are not in school, including orphans, including the, how do we give business opportunity to our people? How do we revive the economy which has collapsed? How do we stop corruption? We will have a zero tolerance to corruption. How do we restore the institutions of government? Financial Intelligence Center, they produced a report, corruption is reported, nothing is happening. So what Nawakwe and PF are trying to do is to divert us from those issues and now drive us to these issues of uh, you know, a house in Sable Road. I mean, look, a house in Sable Road? Is that a house that should occupy the media space, national agenda? Gary, just a little bit. Is, is that what is important? No. All she needed to do before she made this allegation is to go to lands. And she would have had this printer free of charge, maybe at a small fee, 20 kwacha or 50 kwacha. And she would have not gone the way she's gone with the panel. So I am saying we have misplaced priorities in this country. You see, for me, we must not leave the subject of corruption on fire tenders, corruption on fertilizer. By the way, Gary, when we take office, God's will cut us off the people of Zambia, we will save Zambians from the fertilizer import bill up to the quantum of $100 million. We've worked our numbers already. I, I, so, I will give you a, a yes. chance just yeah. uh, before we, yeah. we, we wrap up our, our special interview yes. here at, yes. at your residence to yes. share with us what you feel is best yes. as we get into this election year. Now, I noticed that you you keep um, marrying Madame Nawakwi with the PF. Um, do you feel by any that maybe they are working together? Is, is, I, I don't understand why you keep thinking that. Her actions. Okay. Her actions clearly demonstrate that she's a surrogate of PF. Her actions. Very clear. Her actions. Very, very clear. Parroting things that are not true. An opposition leader must add quality, must bring a competitive atmosphere into the political arena so that government money is not stolen from those in government. As it is on fire tenders. She should be talking about fire tenders together with some of us in opposition. Why is she not talking about that? She should be talking about the NRCs that are not being issued properly in the electoral process. She should be talking about why butane is not good for the country. On your program, she talked about her favor for butane. A genuine opposition leader does not favor butane as the church motherboard is done. Mm -hmm. That is the surrogacy I'm talking about. That is the parroting for PF I'm talking about. She's actually, I really think she did a good job. Because Zambians now know that in that corner, there's no opposition. There's a surrogacy. With what, what do you so think that's that, my answer. What do you think that is doing for the opposition collectively? Because yeah. I know you worked as an alliance together with uh, Madame Nawakwe years back. What do you think that? Twenty zero six. Yes. What do you yeah. think that is doing moving forward? Yeah, I, th I think first, Gary, to be very brief in that answer, mm -hmm. um, that alliance really was consummated during the time of Mr. Mazoka, and so rest in peace, and um, Madame Nawakwe, uh, President Tidienji. They did it before I came on, but Mr. Masoka died, may so rest in peace. But even at that time, even at that time, she was very obstructive. And on your program, she alleged a lot of things which I just ignored. One of the things she alleged was that uh, 
when we were in campaigning somewhere in another province, I sat in a room eating and women were sitting outside eating buns. Yeah, I was eating decent food, I think that's what she meant. And the women were eating buns outside. And she came in to tell me, you know, she was even trying to abuse the Tonga language to say, ah, Musa, Musa. I mean, what a fallacy. You can see the concoction of things that don't exist. The venom, the destructiveness was very clear at that stage. She never campaigned with, uh, with me in 2006. So how was, that, uh, how was it that I was with her when she refused to campaign with me? She campaigned with Piet. With another party, you are in this alliance, you are campaigning for <laughs> a party in another group. Are you an honest person? You are not. So in the opposition, you have a number of dishonest colleagues. She's one of them. In terms of the political consolidation of the opposition, I wouldn't touch her. Going into this election, mm. is being a part of an alliance something that you think you would uh, try and do again? I think, what is the alliance for? It is to consolidate a group of people that offer, group of people, group of parties, group of Zambians, that offer an alternative to the failed peer leadership. The answer is yes to that. We should work together as political parties, as individuals, as churches. That is the way this country has always delivered country. Mm -hmm. Towards independence, Zambians work together. They didn't point fingers, you, you are a Lozi, you are a Tumbuka, you are a Tonga, you are a Bemba. No, they worked together, delivered independence. 1991, we all worked together, Gary, never pointed a finger at each other. That was, all those were alliances, composition of citizens, common agenda. We delivered and removed the one-party state, replacing the multi-party state. 2001, we all worked together to deny the late President Chinua, Mr. Chinua, they take together. We did. 2021, we have to work together for a cause, for unity of purpose, to save this country from sinking, from dying, from destruction that we have as a debt, borrowing too much money, no jobs, no education, no medicines in the hospital, no nothing. We have to come together. So the answer is yes. In order to save from total collapse and total destruction. The destruction is written all over, all over. People are hungry in homes, my brother. And that's what should be occupying our minds. Electoral Commission is handling certain processes wrongly. You can't remove citizens who registered as voters under the existing law. Without a law, you remove them from the register and say, this register doesn't matter. We'll bring about a new register. That's illegal. So the Answer is yes. yes. The answer is yes. Yes, thank you. You would get into an alliance. Like-minded people. Okay. Like-minded people, Zambians who want to retrieve this country economically, socially. Yes. yes. Now, um, I, I'd like to talk about government. Uh, yeah. they, they reacted, obviously, to the, the allegations raised by Madame Nawaki, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, through gov a chief government spokesperson, yes. Mr. Rassini, saying that yes. government is disturbed by these allegations and they are studying the matter. What do you want to First, Zambians should be surprised. Why would they be interested because Madame Nawaki has raised the subject which has been raised over and over, as you can see from this paper. The same subject, right? 2007. This document was generated in 2007. MMD government then. Why are they concerned? Why are they concerned? Why? Because they have set up someone to allege so that they can pick it up like that. It's politics. That's why I have raised issues. But this is not about the characterization. This is not about my house. This is not about Ramco. It's not about Sun International. It's about how do you stop Hakainde Ishilani, given the momentum that he has, given the Bali momentum, how do you stop him? from ascending to saving the people. These are the schemes. That's why they're quick to say. Have you ever heard, Gary, someone who says, we will see how the public opinion goes, then we'll decide what to do. How can anyone say that? You can see, I think Dora, in my view, understood 
what is right and what is wrong. So she had to put that statement that way, which clearly demonstrates that there's a problem here because this matter has been with us for 15 years. So it's a political gimmick. It is to marginalize HH. They're coming to, after you. Exactly. Yeah, it's to create an opportunity we hear to arrest HH, trumped up charges again. Remember, PF have arrested me 15 times. 15 times. And none of these 15 times have I been found culpable. It is to put me in the cells, poison me in the cells, and then claim that we don't know how he died. That is what just, the agenda is. Just on that, yes. you, you've alleged that the state wants to assassinate you. Mm. And to quote your own words, the truth is they want to have access to my physical body so that they can eliminate me. Their plan is to arrest and then kill me. Those are very strong allegations, HH. Well, why are you saying that? Gary, you judge from the happenings. Why would you arrest a political competitor 15 times? Why would you tear gas HH every move he makes when I have a freedom of movement? Why would you, Sesheke, attack a citizen in the manner I was attacked to be killed in Sesheke like that, in Rwanda, in Kitwe at our secretariat, in Nolat Sun FM Radio? Got it. I had to go through the roof to survive. The PF thanks. The police couldn't stop me. So basically, the police cannot touch them. Then, let's put aside. If you follow my colleague, Mr. Lung, several times he has said that he will not allow HH to ascend to the presidency. He would Put it in his way that I will not allow HH to enter state house. I will not want to see HH's name on the ballot paper. What is the meaning of that? Is to take him out. How do you take him out? Because you can't not threaten HH. He's a citizen entitled. He's a citizen entitled to leadership. For him, Mr. Lungu and his cohorts. And his surrogates like Nawapi, it is to stop this guy, create an opportunity to arrest him, finish him off in prison. That is what this is all about. Do I have to die for someone to remain in office? Because I'm a good competitor, a good one for that matter. Imagine if they were not abusing the Public Order Act, I can travel anyhow, I can campaign, as they used to campaign op as PF in opposition, there will be no competition. Mr. Lungu and his surrogates know that. So the ideas they are mooting is to stop this guy. Because he has, Mr. Lungu has said it openly. One time he was in Sobez. He said it. We will never allow this tongue. <laughs> I don't know what has happened. What, what crime this bloody if people they call this, this and that. What have they done? What what they are citizens? Why would you say that you will not allow, even in a very arrogant way, you know? By quoting them, I was even, I, I don't want to be sounding arrogant myself. Why would you stop this Tonga from being president? I'm not seeking presidents because I'm Tonga. I'm seeking president because I'm a citizen of Zambia. One, two, the law allows me to do that. Three, it's my personal decision. It's my right, my, my civil liberties, rights and freedoms allow me to ask myself. Why does this tag always say, we will not allow this one? To be present. So why would you say that if you are in state house, the police are listening, the intelligence is listening? For some officer in intelligence, he may say, Oh, this is a message from the president to eliminate HH. Because the president is a commander in chief. Why would he be saying it is these things, Gary, that build up to make me believe? And the trumped up charges I've talked about, where I'm arrested for treason, I never committed treason. I'm arrested for so many things. I've never done any of those things. And I have never been found wanting by the law. Why continue doing this is to eliminate HH. How best do you want to eliminate it? There's so many ways. One is put him under your control, then finish him off. Zambians must know out there that's the scheme. All of this is not about the house. So it's about eliminating HH from the ballot box, so now, eliminating HH yes. from the presidency. So now it's there. Exactly. It's in black and white. 
besides all all of that, like in, in the political field, and that's what's going on. You mentioned mm. ballot box. At the end of the day, it's about the electorate, and I think it's important for them to know who is the man that they want to put in office mm. to preside mm. over state resources. Mm -hmm. So who is this man? Well, who is H H? Gary, first. I think as I answer your question, no one decides who becomes president. No one. I, I thought the voter, me as an no, individual. No, no, I'm coming. No one as an individual decides. Not Mr. Lungu, despite him thinking that because he's in that office, now he has the power to decide who becomes president, who doesn't. That's mischief, complete mischief. That is abuse of the power given to you by the people, the 17 million people, for example, citizens. They are the only ones who should decide. That's my, my answer. And it is them who should decide through a free and fair election. Starting with issuance of NRSs. Why are NRSs not being issued in some regions of Zambia? Delaying them. Kampiongo, just the uh, Minister of Home uh, Mr. Kampiongo, just announced that there will be a delay in starting with other five provinces. How would you describe that? Sir? They should have started issuing NRS because it's a constitutional right of any citizen to get an NRS when you are 16. So every citizen. So why choose five provinces now, other provinces later? Discrimination, abuse, disenfranchising people. They, then you are delaying. Then you want to open the voting, sorry, the voter registration <laughs> in October for one month. This is September. Four. Today is September 4. When are you going to issue NRSs in other provinces? Is the time period is not enough? No, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Because the law says NRSs must be issued to every citizen, wherever they are, whether they're in Western province or Lusaka or Copper Bell, they must be issued. So why is this PF regime selecting only certain regions? It's to rig elections. That's the point I'm making. So we need a free and fair election. So we don't want a new register per se. The old register must continue. Then additional people must be registered. Then you have a consolidation, clean up the register based on the law that I am a registered voter. Gary, you are a registered voter, I hope. Yes, sir. Why should you be removed from the register? Because you registered under the law. The idea to remove you by wiping out the current voter register is to manipulate the voter register to favor PF. We see you. Zambian see you. We will not allow it. HH is a citizen of Zambia, that was your question, who is seeking public office, grew up in the village, worked very hard, very clear, as I've demonstrated, I was able to pay 61 million kwacha in April before I got involved in privatization. As people like to say, he made his money in the, in the privatization. It's not true. Otherwise, where did I get this money? If they allege that I bought sun, which I didn't, if I had bought sun, it would have meant that I had money before the transaction. Common sense. One doesn't have to, to have gone to start rocket science. So I'm just a simple, humble citizen. A lot of things Gary has said about me. If the rains are late, it's HH. You want to sell, you want to do a transaction in Lower Zambezi National Park, it's HH who sold the National Park. Let's ship them. How is it that HH can sell the Lower Zambezi National Park when he's not legally responsible? Lies and lies and lies. Political marginalization. That's what it is. So I'm just a guy who has worked for myself first, for my children, for the extended family, and God has been kind to us. I must admit, He's allowed us to have some success. But now is the time for us to use that experience, that discipline, that commitment to work. Hard work, 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 and more work. And translate that, zero tolerance to corruption, zero problem. Translate that to managing the country's resources better. Rich country, citizens are poor because of bad leadership, no vision. Even the Bible says, where there's no vision, people perish. That's what you see in the PF now. And there's no qualms about it. So, <laughs> so this is what we want to do for this country, so that we can better the lives of the children who need to go to school. They must go to school. Those who need jobs, they must have jobs. Those who need businesses, they must have businesses. How can you have a country where land is going to foreigners and citizens have no land? You even start accusing citizens 
who are producing food for other citizens to eat. You accuse them of things that are horrible. There's something wrong in that mind frame, in that thinking. It's colossal, you know, negativity. We must come out of it. HH wants to bring an open society, reunite the country, that which is divided. The UPND cabinet table will have cabinet ministers from all the 10 provinces of Zambia because they are all qualified. We want to bring back a professional civil service. We, might, we want to give job security to those in the public sector so that you are not removed on allegation of national interest. Whose national interest? Mr. Lungu's national interest and a few people. Nawaku is national interest. Nawaku and Mr. Lungu doesn't constitute national interest. So, a police commissioner will have job security. They will operate independently. The head of the army, the head of the, the head of all these organizations, FIC, DAC, DAC, DEC, DEC, <laughs> the head of Auditor General, they will have job security. They will not have their FIC report delayed so that it can be docked at. So that you can remove names of the corrupt people in government, those who are buying fertilizer at a high cost. When we will be able to reduce the cost of fertilizer in this country by a hundred million dollars minimum, we've already worked out our number. That is what we want to bring to the government, to the people of Zambia, and that's a service that we want to bring, not to go and steal. You know, the reason people think maybe HH stole from this privatization because in their minds they think that. Because they steal, everyone else steals. That's not true. We are different. Okay, so we want to bring service. That's who HH is. To change all of that. Absolutely. Let's but see. but we want to make sure that the country is reunited. Okay. Not polarization like this. Not using stories of privatization to marginalize, you know, someone who can save this country together with others better, and then continue stealing from the people. Continue denigrating the economy in this way. Continue removing competent govern of a central bank and replace them with arguably so you plan other, to change other, other, all yeah, of that. All of it. Yeah. Mr. Chile Masar, we we'll have to thank you so much <laughs> for walking with us into uh, your home and uh, to share with us your obviously responding to the allegations made by uh, FDD leader Madam Edith Nawaki and uh, of course your plans that you have as we get into this election. Thank you so much. Gary, I'm very grateful to you as an interviewer. Um, I'm very, very grateful. Very difficult subject we have to deal with. I think for some of you, for me, it's a very easy and straightforward subject. Facts don't lie. So thank you for that to you. Thank you to Hold FM. Thank you to other radio stations in Lusaka, elsewhere in our country. We, 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 you have a role. Under UPND, no one, no one, and I mean no one, will shut a radio station. You self-regulate. No one will shut a television station. You self-regulate. You are media, you are professionals, you know you should be fair, you should be balanced, but no one will shut you down because media freedom is enshrined in the Bill of Rights. So, we promise you that, we commit that to you. And we'll take your word for that. Today, rem Gary, remember this conversation. Take my word, I don't say things to please anyone. I say things that are well thought through, that we believe in. And that's why we are consistent. From 2006, we've been very consistent. Maybe we have changed the examples, but consistency is there. Because we are stable characters. Mm -hmm. We are accessible, not mutations, not amoeba, not camouflage. Simple, straight. The country deserves decent leadership now than ever before to reconstruct the economy and the social value for our people. We will care for the people of Zambia, number one, and all the time, not care for ourselves. You see the colleagues in office, mm -hmm. they get the plots more than anyone else. When citizens have no plots, thank you very thank, thank you so thank much, you Mr. Man. I wish we could go on and go on. There's so much yeah. to stuff to talk about. <laughs> but uh, that's all the time we had. Thank this you. was a special interview mm. airing live on Hot FM uh, in Osaka, Kritu FM, right here in Osaka as well, Capital FM in Osaka. Also on Diamond TV, uh, live on Mingotainment as well, and on Hot TV on Facebook. On other radio stations as well, Mchinga uh, Radio. Uh, Liberty Radio in Korokoso, we also had Serenity Radio, Tuta FM in Mansa, Mano FM in Kasama, Feel Free in Chipata, we had iWave in Chingola, we also had uh, Radio Mano in Choma, 
Zambezi FM, Voice of Kalomo, Mafken Radio as well mm. was live. Wonderful. So uh, this has been Gary Masano. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of, of, of this interview. And uh, that's a wrap. Thank you so much again. To Thank you, Gary. Indeed, you're welcome. Thank you. God bless.